Hello. First off, this is a boring graph video. We got like spreadsheets and graphs, and that's about it. If you like montages and video and excitement like I do, I get to stepping because this ain't it. Now pop on out of here before the graphs show up, and we're all sorry. All right, for those of you who are sticking out, Forge and Fire is a TV show where four bladesmiths compete in a series of time challenges to make a blade. There are three stages, and one contestant is removed at the end of each round after their work is reviewed by a panel of judges, leaving a winner who gets $10,000. If you're like me, you've seen every episode of Forged in Fire and have the impression that Forged in Fire is less about winning and more about not losing. I went back and watched every episode currently available, which at this time is 72 episodes up most of the way through season 5, and compiled a list of all the reasons people were eliminated, as given by the judges. Now before I did this, I put this group of predictions together. These were the reasons that I thought people were getting eliminated just based on my memory. So pause the video right now. Take some time, list your top five reasons that you think people are eliminated down in the comments section before moving on, and then we'll test your results. Here I've put into categories the reasons judges give for showing people the door. Medical and out of time are really sort of their own thing, but everything else seems to fit into these broader groups as seen here. Bad heat treatment, bad handle, bad function, and doesn't meet parameters. There's only been 216 eliminations to date, but there's 249 reasons listed here. That's because Sometimes judges list more than one reason. Based on the categories we've discussed, here's the overall list of forge fouls the judges did not excuse. Heat treat tops the list, and if we drill down a little bit, we find that not hardened is the number one issue, followed by large grain, a criticism that's growing in popularity. Strength testing failures such as bending, breaking, cracks after heat treatment, warping, and two contestants ruining their own temper trying to straighten their blades with heat. Next up is bad functioning. I think this is primarily blade geometry. There's lots of issues with cutting, chopping, stabbing, and being too thin, which I think is some of the reasons we're seeing some rolled edges, and that's sort of rolled into that group there. Hard to sort that out sometimes. Too heavy, balance isn't right, and then misshapen. Next is bad handles. And if you're like me, you really thought that bad handle indexing was at the top of this list because it's just such a frequent concern. But actually, the most common reason for elimination is material broke. Material broke. Why are we using pine cone resin when there's G10? I don't know. Misshapen or injurious handles. We had some handles cutting some people, uncomfortable, followed by indexing. Not that common. Forging errors seem a little more common than this, but this is their frequency. Of the forging errors, the most common one is bad forge wells, followed by misshapen, followed by it's too thin to fix any errors, such as warps or uh, fixing grinds or cold shuts, then hammering cold before or after heat treat, some people broke their blades. Cold shuts and the stress riser. In the latter round of a recent episode, a stress riser caused a break. Next up is parameters. Now I thought these eliminations were a little more common than they are, but I suppose this is common enough. First up is missing element, missing technique, an ingredient, the geometry isn't correct, something just wasn't done to direction. Then everything has a length parameter, so too short, too long, that sort of thing. This is a very interesting chart to me. Out of 249 total reasons for getting kicked out of the forge, here they are broken down by round. Round one is green, round two is yellow, round three is red. And as you can see, the reasons are very different. It's interesting. Dominating the first round are things like parameters, forging errors, out of time, water quench, medical, all that stuff. Those things are almost completely absent in round three, which is a new project, a new knife in someone's home forge. Time constraints aren't quite as bad. Uh, fit and finish sort of comes to the front in round three, which I think is good, or at least it becomes more of an issue. It's, I wouldn't say it's prominent, but uh, function, a very big part of round three, which is nice to see. And bad handles. Man, I, I'm just shocked. I just look at that, and handles aren't easy, but of all the things happening here, they're sort of the easiest, and yet there's such a big deal in eliminating people. All right, get out your list. Let's compare. This, this was my list of the top uh, reasons for elimination that I thought were causing people to leave the show. And this is the actual top five individual reasons for elimination. If we reach down into the broader groups and extract the, the top elements in the group, these are the causes. Blade geometry is number one. 12% of all eliminations due to poor cutting, poor uh, chopping, poor stabbing. And I think I attributed the thin edge to a lot of the rolling and damage that got people eliminated here. Um, plus minus on that, you might disagree. Parameters were next. I just lumped that all as the same problem. Even though that's a broader category, to me it's basically one issue. Handle material broke. Handle material broke. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say anything. 
bad forge welds. You're in a strange forge with materials you've never used, equipment you've never used. Seems very reasonable that forge welds would, would go south. Not hardened as part of a heat treating issue, 5% tied with 5% fit and finish. Interesting. How do you guys feel about fit and finish not playing such a prominent role in the final outcome? I think it sort of goes to this question of our bladesmiths losing and individual blades winning. In other words, we see some really talented guys go on the show and they get knocked out, whereas maybe some not quite as experienced smiths that some of us scratch our heads about go all the way and win the whole thing based on a single blade or, or two blades. And, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, there and then in that moment, they did it and props to them. That is something. But is the tilt too much towards an individual performance and away from bladesmithing skill and broader experience? I don't know. What do you guys think? Also, do you think Forge and Fire is something you win or something you just try not to lose? I love the show. You guys tell me what you think. Later.